Hello everybody, <clears throat> I am Kimo Anujam and today we will look at the basic mathematical foundations to AP Physics. AP Physics 1 and the C essentially studies Newtonian mechanics and in Newtonian mechanics most of the physical quantities that you will encounter will be vector quantities. Therefore, it is essential for you to understand how to manipulate vectors algebraically. Secondly, you will encounter things like resolution of force on inclined planes, resolution of vectors in general, motion in two dimensions. All of these is embedded trigonometry. Therefore, it is essential for you to understand your basic trigonometric functions. So in this lecture today, we will start off by looking at basic trigonometry and then move on. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about squares and triangle. A triangle basically is a geometric shape with three sides. The angles and the length may be different. For example, we have this is a triangle. This is alpha, beta, gamma. This is A, B, C. Understand that if A is not equal to B, which is not equal to C, then alpha will not be equal to beta, which will not be equal to gamma. Two, if A is equal to B, which is not equal to C, then alpha will be equal to beta, which will not be equal to gamma. And three, if A is equal to B is equal to C, then alpha will be equal to beta, which will be equal to gamma. An example of a square is, this is A, 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 A. This angle is equal to this angle, which is equal to this angle, which is equal to this angle. So this is a triangle, and this is a square. Now, an associate triangle is one in which Two sides are equal, for example, A is equal to B, which is not equal to C, which implies that alpha is equal to beta, which is not equal to gamma. An example is this. This is alpha. This is beta. This is gamma. This is A. This is B. This is C. An equilateral triangle is one in which A is equal to B, which is equal to C. All the sides are equal, which implies that all the angles alpha is equal to beta, which is equal to gamma. This is alpha, beta, gamma, A, B, C. A scaling triangle is one in which A is not equal to B, which is not equal to C, which means that alpha is not equal to, to beta, which is not equal to gamma. So if you are to draw a scaling triangle, this will be alpha, this will be beta, this will be gamma, this is A. B, C. Pythagorean theorem. Now, Pythagorean theorem actually gives us the relationship between the length of the sides of a right angle triangle. A right angle triangle is a triangle in which there is a right angle. Understand that. Let's go back a little bit. One of the most important properties of triangles is that alpha plus beta plus gamma must be equal to 180 degrees. They have to sum up to 180 degrees. In other words, the sum of all the angles in a triangle is equivalent, is equal to 
180 degrees. And if you look at it carefully, the Pythagorean theorem basically says that um, a squared is equal to b squared, which is plus c squared. Um, a is the hypotenuse. C is adjacent, and B is just simply the opposite. It's just simply the opposite. So keep in mind that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. This is, you will encounter this over and over again over and over again. Let's do an example. Find the length of the hypotenuse. So if the hypotenuse is x, therefore x squared will be equal to 4 centimeters squared plus 6 centimeters squared, which means that x squared will be equal to 16 centimeters squared plus 36 centimeters squared. So x squared will be equal to 12, 52 centimeters squared, and x will be equal to the square root of 52 centimeters. A rope is fixed between two trees that are 10 meters apart. When a child hangs on the center of the rope, it sacks so that the center is 2 meters below the level of the ends. Find the length of the rope. Now we can tear this up. This is x. This is x. This distance from here to here is 5 meters. This is 2 meters. So we know that x squared will be equal to 5 meters meters all squared plus 2 meters all squared so x squared will be 25 meters squared plus 4 meters squared so x squared will be equal to 25 plus 4 is 29 meters squared therefore x will be equal to the square root of 29 meters Hence, the length of the rope is 2x, which means that L is 2 root 29 meters. Now, we are looking for x, and we are given this geometric figure. We could start first by looking for this distance. Let us call this y. We know that y squared is equal to 4 centimeters all squared plus 4 centimeters all squared. So y squared will be equal to, um, this is 16 centimeters squared plus 16 centimeters squared this will give us 32 centimeters squared similarly we know that x squared is equal to 2 centimeters squared plus y squared so this is gonna be 4 centimeters squared plus 32 centimeters squared hence x squared will be equal to 32 plus 4 is 36, 36 centimeters squared, which means that x is 6 centimeters. Nice and easy. Let's look at sine, cosine, and uh, tangent. It is important for you to understand that when we are working 
with the right angle triangle. The longest side is the hypotenuse. The side closest to the angle is the adjacent. And the side further away or opposite is just simply called the opposite. Um, now, the sine of theta is going to be opposite of our adjacent. Cosine theta is adjacent of our, sorry, um, the sine of theta, the sine of theta is opposite of a hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is adjacent of a hypotenuse, and the tangent of theta is just the opposite of an adjacent. So you can summarize this in a short formula called Sokotoire. This is so sine of theta is opposite of a hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is adjacent of a hypotenuse. And the tangent of theta is opposite of our adjacent. It is important that you be able to recognize or to remember this little simple way of memorizing these three formulas because you will meet them over and over again. So let's apply our principle here. Um, let's look for x. Looking for x, this is the opposite. We know the hypotenuse. Remember that sine theta is the opposite of the hypotenuse. Cosine theta is the adjacent of the hypotenuse. And tangent theta will be just the opposite all divided by the adjacent. So this is our Sokotoir rule. So the sine of theta will be equal to x all divided by 20 centimeters, which implies that x is equal to 20 sine 70 centimeters. You can use your calculator to determine the value for x. Similarly, we are looking for the opposite, but we know the adjacent. So the logical choice is tangent of theta, which is just the opposite of uh, the adjacent, which means that x is equal to 8 meters multiplied by tan theta. A ladder leans against a wall. How far is the top of the ladder from the ground? So we want to look for this distance. And how far is the bottom of the ladder from the wall? And we want to look for this distance. We know the hypotenuse. So the sine of 68 degrees is going to be opposite h divided by the hypotenuse 4 meters. So this logically gives us h is equal to 4 sine 68 meters. Similarly, we know that cosine of 68 degrees is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So this means that x is equal to 4 meters cosine theta. A ladder leans against a wall. The length of the ladder is 4 meters and the base is 2 meters. Find the angle between the ladder and the wall. So we need to find this angle. Let's call it alpha and let's call this theta. This is 90 degrees. 
So you must understand that alpha plus beta plus, sorry, plus 90 degrees must be equal to 180 degrees, which means that alpha plus theta is equal to 90 degrees. It's important you keep this in mind. You will use it sooner or later. So the sine of alpha is going to be the opposite, which is 2 meters, divided by the adjacent, which is 4 meters. All of this is going to be half, which means that alpha is 30 degrees. And if alpha is 30 degrees, this would mean that beta is going to be 60 degrees. That theta is going to be 60 degrees. Sorry. Sine and cosine rule. Now, the sine and cosine rule will helps us to either calculate the angle when given the sides or calculate the sides when given the angle. Take, for example, um, but first, I'd like for you to observe something. We know that if we have a right angle triangle, this is theta, this is A, B, C. C squared will be equal to A squared plus B squared. We know that, suppose that this angle is theta, we know that the sine of theta is equal to opposite A of a hypotenuse C. The cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent B over the hypotenuse C. Therefore, we can see that A is equal to C Therefore, we can see that A is equal to C sine theta and uh, B is equal to C cosine theta. If we fit everything up there, you'll have C squared equal to A squared, which is C sine theta all squared plus C cosine theta all squared. This will be c squared sine squared theta plus c squared cosine squared theta. And all of this is equal to c. The, the c's can take care of each other and we will end up with 1 mm. equal to sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. This is one of the fundamental trigonometric identities. Now, keep that in mind. If we divide this, let us call this n. The distance from here, this is cn, Let's call this angle theta. Let's call this angle alpha. Sine theta will be equal to opposite, which is Cn, divided by the hypotenuse, which is B. Um, you will have sine alpha is equal to um, opposite, which is NB, divided by hypotenuse, which is C. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent, which is A. N, divided by the hypotenuse, which is B. Now, the sine rule helps us to determine either the side or the angle given two other sides. You can either determine an angle if you know two sides, or you could, if you know two angles, you could determine a side. For example, 
if you have let me say three four and just one angle let me say 30 degrees then you know that the sine of 30 degrees divided by 3 will be equal to the sine of alpha where this is alpha divided by 4 therefore sine alpha is equal to 4 over 3 the sine of 30 degrees which is just gonna be 2 over 3 so if you know two sides under an angle it will be easy for you to determine any other angle the cosine rule the cosine rule unlike the sine rule if you know one angle and two sides you could determine the other side for example we have 2.1 centimeters 3.5 centimeters we know this angle but we don't know this side so what we do is b squared is equal to 2.1 centimeters all squared plus 3.5 centimeters squared minus sorry minus 2 2.1 centimeters 3.5 centimeters cosine of 70 degrees so all you have to do is simplify this expression with the use of your calculators to get to arrive at the value for b now understand the difference between the sine rule and uh, the cosine rule. The sine rule, if you know two sides or if you know an angle and uh, two sides, you will be able to determine the other angle. But for the cosine rule, if you know two sides and one angle, you will be able to determine the other side. It doesn't matter what type of triangle you are dealing with. Now here are some important values for sine, cosine, and tangent that um, you should know. Um, like the sine of 30 degrees is half, the cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, and the tangent of 30 degrees is 1 over root 3. So this table is pretty much important. You don't actually need to memorize this because in every test, I will provide this table for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, your time. Our next video will be on vector analysis. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Our next video will be on vector analysis.